Good evening. This is Marvin Miller. Several seasons ago, radio listeners were mildly startled by the introduction of one of the most unconventional married couples in microphone history. I use the word unconventional advisedly, considering the pro and con discussions which arose following their first broadcast. My own personal opinion is that this couple is no more out of the ordinary than my wife and myself. Or for that matter, if you'll permit me the liberty, you and your wife. The unconventional couple I'm referring to, of course, is the Bickersons. Tonight, for the first time, we present them in their own half-hour program, an unretouched picture of domesticity. Now, here are Donna Amici and Francis Langford as John and Blanche Bickerson in The Honeymoon is Over. <laughs> As the minute hand of the clock gradually approaches 7 a.m., John and Blanche Bickerson are in their breakfast room, which is also the living room and bedroom of their spacious one-room apartment. Mrs. Bickerson chatters as husband John, ignoring his breakfast, attentively reads the morning paper. Well, why don't you answer me, John? Hmm? If you take your head out of that paper for a minute, you could hear what I'm saying. You always hear what you're saying. You do not. Might as just as well be talking to a stone wall. You never listen to me. Your mind is always a million miles away. Hmm. John. Hmm. I've been signed up to go ten rounds with Joe Lewis at Madison Square Garden. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yesterday, the plumber discovered a radium mine under the bathroom sink. Hmm. I put a nice big gob of poison in your orange juice this morning. Mm hmm. Give me $7 to buy a new hat. You don't need a new hat. Funny thing, but the minute I start talking about money, you can hear me fine. I always hear you, Blanche. What'd you say? I asked you why you came home so late last night. I was working, Blanche. I told you I had to work overtime. Pour me some more coffee. That's tea. Did you get paid? I'll get paid. What time did you get home? 12.30. If you got home at 12.30, why were you so late coming to bed? I know for a fact you didn't go to bed until almost 2. I was in the kitchen putting the stuff away. What stuff? What's the matter, Blanche? You know you told me to bring stuff home for the party this afternoon. Your sister Clara's arriving from Chicago today and you told me to bring stuff. Well, I brought stuff. Did you bring potatoes for the potato salad? I brought potatoes. Did you pair them? I paired them. All of them? All except one. It had a big knob on top and I couldn't find a mate for it. I'm it, did I you... know what you meant, Blanche. I peeled the potatoes and I even boiled them last night. They're in the icebox. Holy smoke, look at the time. Where's my hat? You're wearing it. What about your breakfast? What about it? It's sitting there right in front of you, and you never even looked at it. I looked at it. Well, aren't you going to eat it? No, give it to your sister. What's the matter with it? Never saw such stringy oatmeal in all my life. It's not oatmeal. It's chow mein. <laughs> chow mein? Who eats chow mein for breakfast? Well, I don't know what to give you. You won't eat normal breakfast food. You turn up your nose at stewed rabbit. You say you can't stand the sight of enchiladas. And you hate meatballs and spaghetti. What can I give you for breakfast? What's the matter with an egg, Blanche? An egg, that's all. Why can't I have an egg? There's plenty of ducks around. You're the only man in town who eats duck eggs. I don't know where to buy them. Well, don't buy them. I don't like to eat breakfast. Never have an appetite in the morning anyway. I gotta go, Blanche. It's late. Here's a clean handkerchief. John, can't you take the afternoon off? What for? Well, I think it's only proper for you to be here when Clara and Barney and the children arrive. We're the only relatives they've got, and you've never seen them. I'll see them tonight. Can't you come home a little earlier? I'm sure they won't miss you if you take a few hours off. You're not that vital. I know it, but I don't want them to find it out. <laughs> Our job is hanging by a thread now. We should find something more dignified anyway. What do you mean, dignified? I'm getting paid, and that's all I care about. Well, I don't like to go around telling people that I'm married to a billiard ball salesman. Bowling balls. All right, bowling balls. <laughs> I still think you can do better if you look around. Goodbye, Blanche. John! What's the matter? That's a fine way to leave. Haven't you forgotten something? Handkerchief, cigarettes, my order blank, samples. No, no, I, I got everything. I mean, is that the way to say goodbye to his wife? Just goodbye? Oh, honey, I can't shake hands with you now. <laughs> I've got my fingers stuck in these bowling balls. Oh, goodbye. Did you like the chicken, Barney? 
Too much salt in it. Oh. Let me take those bones off your plate. How about some more potato salad, Barney? Too many potatoes in it. Isn't it awful to be married to a man like that, Blanche? He won't eat potato salad with potatoes in it. I have to fool him and make it with turnips. Oh, for heaven's sake, Clara. Well, it's certainly good to see you after all these years. Did you have a good trip? Lousy. Bye. <laughs> Barney, how can you say that? It was a wonderful trip and the children loved it. Four of us in an upper berth. Oh, it wasn't bad at all, Blanche. Honest. None of us are big people and little Ernie slept in the clothes hammock. Two-year-old kid and she lets him wander all over the train by himself. Well, I couldn't take care of everything, Barney. When the train stopped at Albuquerque, the kid locked himself in the washroom. I wouldn't come out. The conductor was pounding on the window, but that was locked, too. Well, what happened to him? Oh, we found him later walking around under the train. <laughs> I still can't figure out how he got there. Did little George behave himself on the trip? Like an angel. He can be an awful good boy when he wants to. He seemed rather pleased to get off at Pasadena and visit with Barney's sister, didn't you, Barney? No. Well, your sister seemed pleased. They should be here pretty soon. How long does it take to get here from Pasadena, Blanche? By train? Yes. Well, John works there and never takes him over 45 minutes. I thought George was going to stay in Pasadena for a while. Well, I thought so, too. But after Eunice took a look at him, she said she'd bring him back this evening. Uh, which one of you two is older? What? Oh, stop it, Barney. He wants to know everybody's age. Well, Clara's my older sister. Didn't you know that, Barney? No, I didn't know that. You look way older than Clara. <laughs> really? That's just his left-handed way of paying me compliments, Blanche. Barney, why don't you go back to the apartment and see if Ernie's still sleeping? I'll stay here and wait for George. Okay. I'd better take a little nap myself. I might have to look for a job next week. Uh, what's the number of that apartment house? 214. The first apartment on the left. Go ahead. Okay, I'll take them chicken bones for Ernie. He's teething. You know, Clara, I'd completely forgotten what Barney was like. He's awful little for a husband, isn't he? Well, he may be small, but he's wiry. <laughs> sort of outspoken, isn't he? I'd rather have a man be frank about things and then say one thing and mean another. Is John still as short-tempered as ever? Well, he's... Barney used to be that way before the children came. They changed everything. We haven't had a crossword since George was born. Is that so? You'd be surprised what a change would come over John if there was a child in the house. I know. A lot of people have told me that, Clara. Blanche, uh, I was just thinking, that apartment you got for us is rather small for four people. Well, it's the best I could do, Clara, and it's only temporary. Oh, I know, dear, but I, I was just thinking, why don't you let little George live with you for a while? George? would be killing two birds with one stone. Our apartment will be less crowded, and there will be a big change in your married life. Maybe you're right, Clara. I'll call John at the office and tell him we're going to have a baby. Acme Bowling Alley Equipment Company. Could I talk to Mr. Bickerson, please? Not in. He hasn't come off his route yet. Word for him to call his wife as soon as he gets there. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Ah, oh, for the love of Pete! Look out where you dropped those samples, Bickerson. Oh, I couldn't carry him another minute. Why doesn't that cheap buzzard buy us cases for the darn things? My fingers look like a bunch of bananas. <laughs> call your wife. She just called here. Yeah. Do any good today? Ah, waste of shoe leather. I can't understand it. Here it is, the height of the Christmas season, and nobody is buying bowling balls. <laughs> Nothing doing, huh? No. Where is he? He went home early. It's been murder here today. Ah, the old man don't bother me. He just lets off steam. His bark is worse than his bite. Well, he bit a few salesmen today. <laughs> so what? They come and they go. I've been here 12 years. Uh-huh. Business has been bad before. Last year, he lined up ten salesmen, took an 18-pound two-holer, and chalked up a spare. I was the only salesman left standing. You were, huh? Yeah, I was. He knows a good thing when he sees one. Uh-huh. Uh, here's your pay envelope, Bickerson. Pay envelope? Today isn't payday. It is for you. You're kidding. No, I'm not. You got the axe. Holy smoke. 
Oh, don't take it so hard. I'll probably be next. Oh, I don't care for myself. It's what my wife is going to say. She'll blow her cork. What for? It's only a job. Oh, you don't understand. She's got her relatives here from Chicago. She's already figured on a Christmas shopping, and I haven't got 50 cents in the bank. Well, I wish I could help you, Bickerson, Tell but... you, I'm afraid to go home and face her. Do me a favor, will you, Marv? Sure. What do you want me to do? Call up my wife and tell her. You want me to tell her you were fired? Yeah, but break the news very gently. First tell her I dropped dead and then gradually work up to it. Son, quick, quick. Here, here you are. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, will you? Uh, pardon me. I'm sorry. Uh, is this seat taken, Sonny? Sonny, is this seat taken? No. Would you mind taking your feet off? Okay. Those packages, too. Huh? Will you please take those packages off the seat? Just throw them on the floor. Okay. Wise little monkey. Uh, where's that help wanted page? Huh? Nothing. See, accountant, artist, automobile salesman, baker, barber, bartender, bookkeeper. Bartender. Bartender. What'll you have? You mind your own business. <laughs> Excuse me. You're sitting in my seat. Huh? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. Uh... Your son told me it wasn't taken. He's not my son. And I didn't tell him it wasn't taken either. What? I told him somebody was sitting here and he knocked all your packages on the floor. You told me this seat wasn't taken and you told me to throw the packages on the floor. I did not. You did too. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to blame that little child. You can have my seat, madam. I'm going into the smoking car. Thank you. I I I'm sorry, really, I am. Uh, let me pick up those packages for you. Never mind, I'll get them myself. The very idea. Oh, who did that? He did it. I seen him pinch you. Pinch who? <laughs> What's the matter with you, you little muzzler? You just wait until the conductor comes by here. Sit down here, dear. I didn't like his looks from the minute he got off. Oh, I know the type. My husband's a correction officer. What'd you do that for? <laughs> huh? Why'd you tell that lady I pinched her? And why'd you tell me this seat wasn't taken? What did you tell me all those lies for? <clears throat> Give me my bubble gum. What bubble gum? I haven't got your bubble gum. You have to. It's stuck to your pants. Look at that. How am I going to get that off? Give me my bubble gum. Keep quiet till I get my knife out. I want my bubble gum. Stop pulling at my pants. <laughs> That's just fine. I want my bubble gum. Why don't you give the child his bubble gum? He ripped my trousers. Whoa, he pulled a knife on me. Shut up, you little weasel. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. The man's a lunatic. He tried to stab that child. You're out of your mind. Somebody pull the emergency. Ah! I can't have it. Oh, dear. I should have stabbed a little brat at that. Kids. No wonder tigers eat their young. John, what happened to you? Your pants are torn. You're covered with dust. Where have you been? I've been calling the office for hours. I got put off the train and I walked all the way home from Glendale. Well, what happened? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to even think about it. All I want to do is go to bed. Oh, you poor dear. And I have such a wonderful surprise for you. Surprise? Yes, we're going to be the happiest couple in the world. And all because of my sister Clara. What are you talking about? George, come out and meet your new daddy. Well, what do you think of him, John? Oh, no. Go on, Sonny, kiss him. Not me. That's the crook who stole my bubble gum. <laughs>
The Bickersons have retired. Blanche Bickerson tosses restlessly in the dark as poor husband John, unstrung by the events of the day and suffering an attack of undulant insomnia or blasters phenomenon, engages in another losing battle with a dread ailment. Listen. <laughs> There isn't another woman in the world who'd sacrifice her youth and her looks to live with a man who rattles himself to sleep like a, a lot of old bones in a bag. What do you think I am, John? Old bag. What? what? What'd you say, Blanche? I've never been so upset in all my life. Why couldn't the child live with us for a few weeks? What child? George. Don't mention his name. Well, you had no right to send him back to Clara. Clara and Barney are just sick about it. I can well imagine. <laughs> Let me sleep, Blanche. I had him here for two hours before you got home, and he was a perfect angel. Mm -hmm. What if he did make a little trouble on the train? He's a, He's a boy, trouble. and all boys are kind of wild. Anyway, how did he know that you were his uncle? Well, what kind of an excuse is that? Well, I'm sure if you just try to understand him, there wouldn't be any problem at all. That's what you think. I don't think I know. I don't think you know either. <laughs> Ed's gone. I'll forget about him. I won't forget about him. And you needn't have made such an exhibition when you hauled him down the street to his mother. Oh. That was no way to carry a boy, John. Well, I used to be a bowling ball salesman. <laughs> Almost got my finger bit off. What do you mean, you used to be? Well, did, uh, didn't he tell you? Didn't, uh, did Marvin call you from the office? Nobody called me from the office. What happened? I got fired. Oh, John, what did he do that for? I didn't do it. The boss did it. Well, he must have had a pretty good reason. I felt this coming for a long time, John. You haven't had your mind on your work. Business was bad. How can you say that? Prices are going up every day. Well, nobody's buying. That's not true. I'm buying twice as much as I ever did. <laughs> business isn't bad with me. Good night, Blanche. No. If you didn't do any business, it's because you weren't concentrating on your work. You've just lost your ambition. You're not the man I married, John. Whatever happened to your get up and go? It got up and went. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. You've lost interest in everything except that precious bourbon of yours. Now, just a minute, Blanche. I married a great big corkscrew. I resent that. I don't care. You can accuse me of not being a good salesman or not having ambition or anything else, but drinking is not one of my failures. No, it's one of your few successes. <laughs> the only reason I use bourbon is because the doctor prescribed it. He said I'd stop snoring if I took a jigger of bourbon and two aspirins every night. That's not what you do, though. Yes, it is. It is not. You're six months behind on the aspirin and two years ahead on the bourbon. Well, aspirin gives me a headache. <laughs> bourbon has nothing to do with me losing my job. Then why did you get fired? Because no man can serve two masters. That's right. Blame me. Since when do I boss you around? You know very well I let you have your own way in almost everything I want. <laughs> You've been running me for years. I have not. It started right at the altar. When I said, I do, you said, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> How can you lie there and deliberately make oh, up well, such Oh, well, don't terrible... rile me up. You just sympathize with me when I get a bad break. Instead of hounding me, our marriage would work a lot better. Matrimony is a serious thing. You're a fine one to talk about matrimony. You don't even know the meaning of the word. It's not a word. It's a sentence. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing, how you suffer. I didn't get such a bargain, you know. There's better fish in the ocean than the one I caught. There's better bait, too. <laughs> then it's true. You don't love me and you never did. Oh, I did, too. What? I mean, I do, too. You don't, you don't, you don't. Blanche, I do. Well, you never say it. I say it a thousand times a day. Well, say it now. I love you. Well, you love me as long as you live? Yes. I swear. Swear you love me as long as you live. Cross my heart and hope to die. That has a double meaning. 
Well, I only meant it one way. It's really an effort for you to show any kind of affection for me, isn't it, John? Why are you so ashamed to tell me you love me? I'm not ashamed, Blanche. I just can't seem to convince you. That's all. You know I love you so. So what? That's what I say. Who cares? <laughs> Put out the lights and go to sleep. If only you'd let me know that you appreciate what I'd do for you. Oh, you don't do so much for me. Is that so? Who cooks for you? I do. Who cleans for you? I do. Who does your laundry? The laundry. <laughs> Only once, and that's because the washing machine was broken. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a clean shirt. I haven't got a clean shirt. You have to. I dusted one off today. <laughs> dusted it off is right. And you press the collar with a curling iron. Besides, I wore it today. Today? What happened to the shirt you wore Tuesday? I wore it Wednesday. And I was going to wear it again Saturday, but I spilled some gravy on it Friday, so I cut the stain out and made a brown collar for my Sunday shirt. Oh, stop complaining. You've got two lovely shirts. One shirt, and it's not lovely. It hasn't even got a shirt tail. You don't need a shirt tail. Just wear your pants higher. I can't wear them any higher. I wear my pants so high, now I have to unzip them to blow my nose. <laughs> Your voice to Gloria Goosby. Mm, now don't start with Gloria Goosby. Believe me, if you were around her for a little while, you'd cool off in a hurry. I've been around her for hours and I never cool off. <laughs> I mean, I despise Gloria Goosby and I wouldn't have anything to do with her. And why does she keep staring at you like she's hypnotized? She doesn't stare. Just that she wears those outlandish dresses and they bring out her eyes. <laughs> they bring out yours, too. No wonder all you men gawk at her. All her gowns are strapless and backless. Would you like me to dress like that? Mm. Maybe I should. Wonder how I'd look in a gown that's strapless and backless. Skinless and boneless. <laughs> I'll never forgive you for that remark, John Biggerson. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. I don't know what I'm saying. Why don't you let me sleep, Blanche? Blanche, where are you going? I'm leaving this house and I'm never coming back. Blanche, wait a minute. Come back here. What's the matter with you? It's no use, John. We'll keep on fighting like this. I tried to make our lives more pleasant by bringing little George here, but you wouldn't have him. All right. I'll go get him in the morning. You say it, but you won't do it. <laughs> do it now. What? Go on. Get up and bring George back. Blanche, are you out of your mind? It's four o'clock in the morning. Either you bring George back or I'm leaving. Nobody'd believe this. Where's my clothes? Just throw my kimono over your pajamas. <laughs> they only live down the street, 214. The first apartment on the left. I know I'll wake up and find this is all a bad dream. Go on, take a flashlight so you don't have to turn any lights on. I'll phone Claire and tell her you're coming. Two fourteen. Where is two fourteen? Wish they'd put some street lights in this crummy neighborhood. Broken down flashlight is no good. Batteries must be dead. Can't see your hand in front of your face. Looking for something? Huh? Oh, hello, officer. Uh, shine that light around a little bit. I'm looking for number 214. Live there? No. No, just looking. Why? Not everybody walks around at 3 o'clock in the morning wearing a pink kimono and carrying a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> bottle of bourbon? No wonder it wouldn't light it. Dear heaven, I almost threw it away. What's that? I picked it up by mistake. I thought it was a flashlight. Well, it's not a total loss. Will you join me, officer? Uh, no thanks. I'm off duty. 214. <laughs> 214's right on the corner. And you'd better keep moving so you don't catch cold. Yeah, yeah, I better wrap this bourbon around me a little tighter. <laughs> First apartment on the left. Hope I don't wake anybody up. Wish I could put on the light. Where is the little deer? And here he is, sleeping like an innocent newborn vulture. <laughs> well, here goes. <clears throat> This kid is heavier than I thought. Only another ten yards. 
pick up a friend? Oh. <laughs> Was that you, officer? Yes, it's me. Uh, may I ask what you have in the bundle? It's my nephew. I'm bringing him home to my wife. It's a long story, officer, but I assure you, this is nothing anybody would want to steal. Mm-hmm. Well, you better watch how you got those blankets wrapped around his head. He's liable to smother. You think so? <laughs> Thanks, officer. Good night. Blanche, open up, will you? What'd you lock it for? He weighs a ton. Put on the lights. No, it'll wake him. Keep your voice down. What'll I do with him? I've got the cot already in the kitchen. Put him down gently, John. There. There's your new son. You've just become a mother. Are you satisfied? Shh. Go on into your own bed. Now I can sleep. Oh, what a day. Lost my job. Got thrown off a train. I delivered children at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, John, must you start snoring as soon as you close your eyes? Snoring? Who's snoring? I'm not snoring. It's that darn kid. That's who it is. George? Yeah, George. Go turn him over on his side. Well, I never. Turn over, George, dear. John! What's the matter? This isn't George. You brought back Barney. <laughs> Why was I ever born? <laughs> 